In this video, we're now going to start looking at writing numbers in polar form. In the first video, we introduced polar form, and that was z is equal to r cosine theta plus i sine theta. You might hear it abbreviated to cis theta. I don't, it's not something I'm hugely, um, I like, I prefer the long form, but you can use this um, notation. So r cis theta. We're asked to express the following in the form r cos theta plus i sine theta, where theta is between negative pi and positive pi. Give the exact values of r and theta where possible, or values to two decimal places otherwise. The way I like to work with these is simply to draw an argon diagram. If we now consider the first one, 7 is a real number, so we can put this on what we call the real axis. In uh, FP1, we appreciated or learnt that this was real z, and this was imaginary z. Okay, so what we're going to do now is place 7 on here, and that's going to sit just here. Okay, so this is a point 7. Quite clearly, we can see the absolute value or the distance from the origin, the modulus r, is going to be equal to 7. Remember, r is given to be the absolute value of z or the square root of x squared plus y squared. In this case, it's quite clear to see that distance is 7. The angle that it's creating is going to be 0. So we can simply express this as z is equal to 7 cosine of 0 plus i sine of 0. And that right there is in either polar form or what we call modulus argument form or mod arg form. Let's now consider the next one. We've got negative uh, 5i. That is going to sit down here on the negative uh, imaginary axis. So this is down at minus 5i. Remember, we measure from negative pi round to positive pi. This, the argument of this complex number, is going to give us simply negative pi by 2. And again, we can see that r is going to be 5 as it's lying on the axis. So we can write this now. The absolute value is 5. And then we have cosine of minus pi by 2 plus i sine of minus pi by 2. And that is in mod arc form. Let's now look at this next one. Um, we've got root 3 plus i. So in this one, what we're going to do, and I'll place it out here, we go along root 3, along the real axis, and up 1. And I'll put it just there. So that's going to be now, the complex number in Cartesian form is root 3 plus i. We've shown that r is equal to the modulus of z, or the square root of x squared plus y squared. If we look at this now, what we've got is the square root of x squared, which is going to be 3, plus 1, which is now going to give us the square root of 4, which is 2. So we can say that r is going to be equal to 2. That is the modulus. So in modulus argument form, the modulus is 2. If we consider the argument now, and if I draw a line out from the origin, what we appreciated was that mod z, our principal argument, was given as the inverse tangent. So theta here, in this case, right, as we would write it here, is given equal to the inverse tangent of y over x. So it's going to be 1 over root 3. This is an exact value. We should spot this to be pi by 6. So we can say now that theta is going to be equal to pi by 6. So if I now write this, z will be equal to, we've got a modulus of 2, so we can put this now as 2 cosine of pi by 6 plus i sine of pi by 6. And that is what we wind up with. Okay, let's look. Um, that one's fairly straightforward. We'll go for the uh, next one. In fact, we'll move on one and we will sketch this one here. So, again, on an argument, uh, an argon diagram, we can show this in um, the Cartesian form. So, this one is going to be 1 minus i. If we think about what we're going to have here, 
the value of r is the modulus, the absolute value of z, or we could say it's the square root of x squared, which will give us 1, plus the uh, square of y, which is going to give us 1. So from this, we can see r is equal to root 2. If we consider now the argument, the argument is down here, okay? And that argument is going to be the inverse tangent now. The argument, which we'll put as theta, is going to be the inverse tangent of negative 1 over 1. And we should again appreciate that this is an exact value of negative pi by 4. So we can write this as z is equal to root 2 cosine of minus pi by 4 plus i sine of minus pi by 4. This is now the polar form. Whilst we're here, we could write it in the exponential form we introduced in the first video. I could write this as z is going to be equal to root 2 e to the i, and we'll write it just here, i, minus pi by 4. And that is in exponential form. Polar form, exponential form, Cartesian form. Okay, let's do another one. Let's do this one now. Negative 8. This lies on now the real axis at negative 8. Quite clearly, the value of r is 8. If we consider this angle, remember, we measure from negative pi to pi, inclusive of pi. We can see that the argument right here is pi. So we can say that arg, and you might see it written as arg z, is equal to pi. The argument of the complex number z is equal to pi. Okay, so there we go. I, I think I was going to even write pi by something, um, but I've turned it into a line. It is pi. So let's write this then. We could write this as z is equal to 8, and then we've got cosine of pi plus i sine of pi. Now, if we were handed this and we were asked to put this in Cartesian form, remember that's polar form, Cartesian form, it's a real number, it's negative 8. If we just think about going back to our trig work, the cosine of pi is equal to minus 1. We know that. We know that the sine of pi is equal to 0. Okay, it's just there. So that's going to be 0. Let's write this out again. Z is equal to 8. Cosine of pi, we've just seen, is negative 1 plus i sine of pi, and we've seen sine of pi is naught. If we think about what's going to happen here, if I look at that, all I'm going to get now is z is going to be equal to minus 8. So in Cartesian form, quite clearly, you can see we can convert between the two. And we'll come on to that later. OK, let's now have a go at... Uh, let's do this one, as all the others look like they're going to give us... Um, uh, non-exact values. So let's look at where this one is going to be. This one now is going to be 3 minus 4i, which is going to be somewhere, give or take, down here. Okay. So let's place this on here. So in Cartesian form, z is equal to 3 minus 4i. So if we now want uh, the modulus of z, which we call r, that is the absolute value right there. So we can now say that r is going to be equal so let's go for r is equal to the square root of 3 squared, which is 9, plus now negative 4 squared, which is 16. So we can see r is going to be the square root of 25, which is 5. We're now interested in the argument. And remember, we said that the argument was given equal to the inverse tangent of y over x. So what we're going to do now is minus, uh, we end up with minus 4 over 3. So in a calculator, uh, we're in uh, radians mode. Let's do the inverse tangent of negative 4 thirds. This will give us our value for the argument. And we want this to two decimal places, so negative 0 0.93. So we can now write this as follows. We can write z is equal to 5 cosine 
of minus 0 0.93 radians plus I sine of minus 0 0.93 radians. And that is now in polar form. OK, let's just go back very briefly. Um, where was the one that I did uh, right now? OK, let's look at this idea right here. One of these we found uh, to be z is equal, and I think it was 2, wasn't it? Let's just grab that back. Uh, root 2, my apologies. Uh, z was equal to root 2 cosine of minus pi by 4 plus i sine of minus pi by 4. OK. When we did trig way back, we saw that cosine was an even function. So if we say the cosine of negative x is equal to the cosine of x, we saw sine was an odd function. So when we had the sine of negative x, that was equal to negative sine of x. If we consider the following, we might often see something written along the lines of root 2 cosine of pi by 4 minus i sine of pi by 4. If we look, this isn't in the form, this mod arg form that we're used to. We're used to seeing a positive in between. If we think about this, this could have been rewritten as cosine of minus pi by 4 plus i sine of minus pi by 4, which we've got above. All that we've done is made use of the fact that cosine is an even function, sine is an odd function, and rewritten these. The cosine of minus pi by 4 is the cosine of pi by 4. That's quite clear. If you sketch that up now, you will know that to be the case. This as a value down here at negative pi by 4 is exactly the same as the cosine, as we're used to, is positive in the first and fourth quadrant. Yet sine, sine of pi by 4, um, negative sine of pi by 4, is sine of negative pi by 4. So that's something that you'll come across later. But hopefully that's given you a rough insight onto putting numbers in polar form.